to see them. Their name is the Stonewall Players. Let's put our hands together for them. The Stonewall Players! Because under my thumb is the detonator to Mother's Little Helper. <laughs> A bomb that will paint Gotham City black as the clock strikes Ruby Tuesday. Apocryphal! <laughs> <laughs> Time is on my side, Batman. Don't play with me because you're playing with fire. <laughs> Sign the Riddler. <laughs> <laughs> P.S. Get off of my cloud! Now who would have known that all those clues are lyrics by some rock band called the Rolling Stones? I would have. What puzzled me was the nature of this game. Of course I <laughs> solved the riddle piece by piece, starting with the first clue. Give me shelter. I wonder why he would use that phrase, which, as you know, happens to be... A Rolling Stone song. The name of Gotham's battered women's shelter. <laughs> you mean you never heard that song? After clearing the women's shelter, I immediately went to the only logical next place. To the giant 50th anniversary Rolling Stones concert here in Gotham. <laughs> to Sherman Williams, <laughs> see if they would be a large purchase. A black paint. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> they even played at the Wayne Industries Amphitheater! Wayne <laughs> Industries, you say, well. Why don't you why that should matter? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's the Rolling Friggin' Stones, for Christ's sake! That's what the waiter at Ruby Tuesday said. The damn waiter at Ruby Tuesday had to tell you who the Rolling Stones are! After I finished my sliders and paid the bill, I immediately went to. A concert? The opening night of Gotham's Mossless Rock Gardens. Uh, Mossless Rock Gardens? You mean tell me you know who the Rolling Stones are? I'm sorry, Chris, I'm not up on pop culture like you. Uh, 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 pop culture, they're, they're a friggin' household name. Can we just focus on the bomb here? Fine. So I showed the letter to the groundskeeper at the Rock Garden, and he told me all about the concert. Finally. So I went, and sure enough, the Riddler was there. So I said, enough games, Riddler! Your cell at Arkham Asylum is waiting. <laughs> but he... He <laughs> was... <laughs> now what the hell is that? How many you ever heard that sweet butt before? Even my grandmother knows that song. <laughs> <laughs> Do I look like Casey Kasem to you, Commissioner? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask something, Batman. Well, when you listen to music, what, what, what do you listen to? I don't! But when you do, Ugh. come on! <laughs> when, when you're cruising around that Batmobile of yours, I, I know you gotta be playing something. <sighs> okay, well, if it's really that important... It I, is! I don't know, uh... Sting? Oh, God, Sting! I hate to get Southerner's Tales a great record! That's <laughs> so cheesy! His base work with the police is unprecedented! <laughs> <laughs> My God, Batman, now I know why you live in a cave. Do you mean to tell me <laughs> that the soul cages doesn't awaken something in you? <laughs> Hold on, Batman. I think my phone's ringing. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, this is he. What? The bomb at the Rolling Stones concert was a decoy? A black paint bomb went off the Gotham Moss's rock guard and killed a busload of battered women. 
I met an old man who told me he had a potion that could make me immortal. So, I took a sip, and then immediately spit it out. It tasted like the inside of a cast. It was at that moment that I realized that no man should live forever. <laughs> so, I went back to the site of the plane crash and ate the rest of the survivors. <laughs> <laughs> Little Arnie flipped Big Arnie's rickshaw, you know? Things were a little tense. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got you. Oh, listen to me blabbing away up here. What did you say your name was, hon? It's, uh, it's Rick. Well, pleased to meet your acquaintance, Rick. Uh, what did you say your name was? Oh, it's probably Donna. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I gotta tell you, I know a lot of distinctive Donnas. Okay. So there's my Aunt Donna. She's a hairdresser. Yeah. And there's my neighbor Donna. She, she does hair. Go on. And there's Donna, my, my parents' hairdresser. Oh my god. Oh my god, they're all the same exact person. Completely interchangeable. We all talk the Donna talk and walk the Donna walk. <laughs> we all watch the same soap, smoke the same cigarettes, drive the same Pontiac Firebird. <laughs> <laughs> Most of us work in the beauty industry, and the Donnas who don't are they're just fucking kidding themselves. <laughs> We share a single ancient Donna spirit, older than God himself. You know the Sphinx? Yeah, I've seen pictures. Well, before those archaeologist types mocked it up, it was known as the Donna. Its hair was perfect. That's, well, that, that's beautiful. It, it must be nice. I, I feel no kinship with other Rex. It is nice. It's, it's nice to be able to telepathically communicate with other Donnas across the universe. You <laughs> see, a million eyes across time and space. <laughs> the Donna's <scope. laughs> Wow! But it does have its drawbacks. You know, with the, the Donna Slayers and all. <laughs> <laughs> well, when one Donna dies, her power is uh, equally distributed amongst all of the Donnas. <laughs> So, the dark one. The, the dark one? Donna Kerrigan. She was in Minnesota, has two kids. Oh. So, the dark <laughs> one decided that she would start killing other Donnas in order to become more powerful. You know, a more proficient hairstylist. <laughs> that, that makes sense, because I would do the same. So, <laughs> you, know, you. So, she went around and she started forming a fleet of dark Donnas to take out all the good Donnas. Make her hair salon the most powerful in the world. Wait, wait. All those beheaded Donnas on the news I've been seeing. You mean that wasn't just a coincidence? Afraid not. That's the doing of the dark Donna. That's why I keep this sword right here. <laughs> just waiting for the day when... <laughs> Donna Kerrigan! I finally found you, Donna Bartucci! <laughs> Kim! 
trying to say with that. Uh, it's a real stinker. A real stinker. Uh, I'm just being honest, God. It's your commandment, not mine. Hey, look, can we all just calm down a little bit? Uh, God, would you mind stopping the downpour of frogs outside? I just have my car detailed, you know. No, no, no. If this kid thinks he can write a better Bible 3 than God himself, he should have to explain. Well, boy, explain. Okay. God, why don't you sit down there? I honestly, I'm going to yeah, level with you right off the bat. I don't know what to do with this. I, I, like, I'm going to have to wash my hands. This is so bad. <laughs> okay. All right. So there's this whole prequel thing that we get. Yeah, God loves prequels. Don't you think the book of Genesis is a pretty definitive beginning for the creation of heaven and earth and all? Uh, well, I mean, it is called Genesis. That's what the word means, right? <laughs> all right. We take that part out. We can start moving paper, right? <sighs> Not... Not quite. Uh, in, in, in the book of Jaden, who, who is Jaden anyway? <laughs> who is Jaden is only the eighth most popular baby name in the United States. Oh. Jaden and my children. Sure. Yeah. Oh, fine. So, so in the book of Jaden, you and the devil team up to fight off the Scientologists. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Comes a little close to X two X Men United, don't you? X two X Men United. <laughs> I gotta admit, God, it is a little X2 X Men United esque. <laughs> I mean, thematically, right? It's <laughs> been on TBS a lot lately. <laughs> so I guess that's why you describe St. Peter as being Ian McKellen like. So sue me! <laughs> and this whole other part with, with, with Joseph Smith in here, what, what, what's he doing in there? Well, you know, I figured I'd throw in a fan fiction reference. A fan! <laughs> hey, if George Lucas can do it, I sure as hell can. You're no George Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, so to continue, you, you, you got the prophets with amnesia, your, your retcon revelations. Look, look what we want talking to you about. <laughs> you write about yourself writing the third part of the Bible. I mean, well, look, I know, I know this meta garbage is in right now, but come on, guys, you're better than that, that, right? It's a clever device. It's so masturbatory. Masturbatory, Jerry. Oh, Jerry. Ah. <laughs> Jerry. Oh, Jerry. Oh, Jerry. Do <laughs> <Give> ya? <laughs> God, let's just save this. The, uh, the manuscript will... Well, it doesn't really meet our needs at this time. Jerry! Mm. Thou hast forsaken me! <laughs> <laughs> Don't be so glum, God. Hey, you're the guy who created the guy who created the car phone, man! <laughs> <laughs> You'll get through this. Remember when you thought the New Testament was going to be a sophomore slump? That Jesus guy is like a household name now, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I've willed a lot of terrible things into existence. Yeah, sure. Disease! Genocide! Marmaduke! <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I regret creating is writer's block. Switch it, Jack. Don't you have off? You fix this. You're my boss. <laughs> God, listen. Market research shows that what people want nowadays is that old vintage God. You know, the fire and brimstone. You don't say. Yeah. So my advice to you is you get back out there. You part the seas. You plague the Egyptians. <laughs> you start terrorizing Job again. He deserves it. Fuck that guy. <laughs> you get back to your roots. Back to my roots, eh? You throw away that math book and you start writing this bad boy on stone slabs with lightning. Kapow! 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 <laughs> yeah! Yeah! And if that doesn't work, I can just flood the world and reboot the first two books. <laughs> hey, God, uh, how about we just take a step back? Uh, I'm just a new draft of Bible 3, the Final Testament, the third installment of your best selling Bible trilogy together. And then we'll, uh, we'll see where that takes us. What do you say, old boy? Uh, I don't know. I, 
Always like a good fly. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> What the hell? My will be done. Another draft it is. Oh, thank God! No, Jerry! Thank Andrew! <laughs> Andrew! You're a real straight shooter, kid. Glad you were created in my image. Ah, thanks, God. <laughs> well, I'd best be going now. A lot of work to do, or opinions to change, or something. Hey, <laughs> you old son of a bitch! Peace be with you, my children. <laughs> <laughs> You know something? All things considered, Andrew, I think I did a pretty good job in that. <laughs> Handled that well. Yes, you did. Yeah, yes, you did. And you know what? If we're real lucky, maybe his next draft will be readable, right? Ha! <laughs> 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 oh, not a chance. Oh, complete dog shit, that will be. <laughs> Probably start gathering some animals. <laughs> <laughs> two by two? I'll call my art guy. <laughs> Hello, Pennsylvania. <laughs> you all I don't know who's in the back row. <laughs> Loud and clear? <laughs> I can make out some of your faces well enough. Others are just skin blobs. It's kind of creepy. Anywho, I think this story will help illuminate the problems of our union. Once, there was a blind man who had always wanted a child. He prayed night and day for a woman to bring him the gift of a child. One day, a bear broke into his house looking for food. The man knew the bear was a bear and not a child, but he was mauled anyway. <laughs> you know, I arrived here last night by train, and I've walked around some, had some chocolate, and I found this place is no fun factory. <laughs> Not at all. What? So you guys just milk cows and shoot tobacco, right? Sounds culture. No, no, it really does. How do you guys entice people to live here? What's the slogan? Hey, hey, no, no, I've got one. Come live in Gettysburg. No one's ever died of boredom before. We think. You like? Because Papa likes. So I'm going to end the speech now and get out of town. Tell the goats I walk right. <laughs> Fine! 
But if I'm going in there, then the gloves are coming off! <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how this thing takes the fucking journey! <laughs> Son, there's a saying in our line of work. You don't fight dirty with a creature from the Black Lagoon unless you can take a knee to the groin. And eyes full of dirt! Probably some low blow comments about your mom. Huh? Let me ask you. Who would win in a fight? Sir? A real backyard brawl. I'm talking creature from the Black Lagoon, Mothra. Well, either of them blindfolded? Mm. <laughs> it stepped on me. My God! <laughs> That's not the way things are supposed to work. That's not the natural order of things. How did it happen? Well, I go in there and I don't see it. The next thing I know, I'm the guest of honor at a surprise party of pain. <laughs> I go legs in the air, ass over tea kettle, and then the damn thing standing on me. Like a newly conquered land. This is some next level shit, boys. <laughs> now you know me. I ain't, <laughs> I ain't yellow. But this thing, it's bigger than us. Seriously, by about a foot and a half of its on its hind legs. What are you trying to say? I'm saying we run, Hank! We change our names, we begin new lives! We can become plumbers or something! I mean, we already have a van, we're like halfway there! Come on, Hank, do the right thing! Alright, let's run! Set God! Okay, we can use a piece of my undershirt for the white flag. Wait, what? what? Well, you guys are seriously gonna give up? Hey, what did I say? You can only speak when you're spoken to. No! You only speak when you're spoken to! You two call yourselves exterminators? Think of the greats, the titans of pest control that came before us. Vinny D. Camillo, Ernie Clown, Dusty McVeigh. <laughs> Listen, kid, Dusty McVeigh? He never had to deal with that hell beast in there. Maybe not, but if he did, would he have cut and run? No. No, not a chance. Not a chance. Not Dusty. It's not Dusty. <laughs> <laughs> well, kid, you, you got a plan? Oh, plan? Oh, shit. Oh. All right, well, maybe, uh, all right, maybe we can reason with it. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we can talk it down, you know, uh, kill it with kindness. Uh, After all, spoonful of sugar makes the giant bug reconsider its ways. You say that every damn time. When has it ever worked? Well, almost that one time in Tulsa. That's true. Look, boys, <laughs> there's a saying where I come from, too. I would lay my armor down if you would rather love than fight. I'm going in there. <clears throat> Taylor Swift lyrics. <laughs> Not that I... Uh, oh, yeah. No. I'm not gonna paint with that brush. No. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Okay. Preach from the Black Lagoon, Mothra, Taylor Swift, Ladder Match, Pay Per View. Who you got? Well, Hank, I guess the question is, which one's wearing the blindfold? Oh, mercy. Just Taylor Swift. <laughs> the, uh, the, the kid's been in there for a while now. Yeah, right. Maybe that kid was on to something with all that spoonful of sugar makes the giant bug reconsider his ways crap. <laughs> Oh, man. What's, uh, what's that, Hank? I learned something today. Oh, me too, yeah! <laughs> this, this job, it's not just... Oh my god!
<laughs> He's dead. <laughs> Plumbers? Plumbers. <laughs>